Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we finally have No Man's Sky working on the Apple Silicon Mac, but no, this is not the native ARM port which is supposed to come out later this year, but this is in fact the Nintendo Switch version of the game being natively emulated on the first official macOS release of Ryujinx. And not only is this emulator capable of playing older games, but it's also the first emulator on Apple Silicon Macs which can play current gen titles. And these include games that have just been released. And this comes as a pretty huge surprise because it was only a few days ago that I made a video about a hacked version of Ryujinx running a tiny selection of games. But now the actual original Ryujinx team have released an official macOS port and it works far better than I ever could have imagined, especially given how many technical barriers they had to overcome in order to get this to work on Apple Silicon hardware. So today what I'm going to do is to show you how to install Ryujinx on macOS, whether it's an Intel or an Apple Silicon Mac. And we're also going to be doing a bit of performance testing and comparisons between the M1 Max chip and also the original M1. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming tutorials. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to the Ryujinx website, which is ryujinx.org, and then we'll go to the download section here. And then we'll click on this new macOS download button here. Once that's done, we're going to go to our finder, and then we're going to click on the downloads folder, and then we're going to find our ryujinx.app.tar.gz. Here we're going to double click to extract, and then Ryujinx is going to be extracted onto our downloads folder. Then what we're going to do is to drag and drop this into our application folder and then let go then we're going to scroll down and then find Ryujinx here so double click on this here it's saying it can't be opened just press ok here you can hold down the control key and then click on Ryujinx and then press open and then here it's going to ask us if we want to manually open this press open and now Ryujinx has been installed onto macOS so the next thing that we need to do is to install the firmware. So what we're going to do is to leave a link to this excellent Switch Emulators install setup guide. It's not specific to macOS, but it's going to help us find some of the download links necessary. So the important section here is called Section 2, Installing Keys and Firmware. So technically the keys and the firmware are necessary to get the emulator to run. However, they're proprietary to Nintendo and we're not allowed to show you how to distribute them in this video. However, if you copy and paste these codes, and then put them into the base64 decoder at the top of the guide. What you can do is to paste this into the website here. And when you press the decode button, you'll be given a new URL, which you can copy and paste into your browser to go on to the next download step. So ideally what you want to do is to download the latest firmware and keys. So 15.0.1 should use the same keys as 15.0.0. And once you have those two files, we can move on to the next step. So let's say we have our firmware file here. We're going to double click to extract, and then we're also going to extract our keys file. Within the keys folder, we're going to get our prod.keys and title.keys. We're going to control click and copy, and then we're going to put them in the Ryujinx folder. So here we're going to open up Ryujinx again, and then go to file, and then click open Ryujinx folder, and that's going to open up the .config file where Ryujinx lives. If you don't have a system folder already, you can always control click on here, click new folder, and then create a system folder. And within here, we're going to control click and then paste our prod.keys and title.keys files that we've just downloaded. And now we're ready to move on to the next step. So within Ryujinx again, we're going to click on tools, install firmware, and then install a firmware from a directory. Click on this, and then we're going to go to our downloads folder. I want to find that firmware that we've just downloaded and extract and we're going to select this folder. So press open. Here it's asking us, are we sure we want to install 15.0.1? Press yes to continue. So here it's saying that the firmware has successfully installed and press OK. So at this stage, I recommend that people add a controller. So go to system settings and then go to Bluetooth and then make sure you have a controller paired up. I'm using a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. And so within options here, what we're going to do is go to settings and then we're going to go to input. And what we're going to do is to select my PlayStation 5 controller, which I've already paired up, and then I'm going to press apply. And next thing as well is just make sure that we have Vulkan backend turned on. OpenGL is not an option. The resolution scale is set to 720 by 1080. Also within user interface, what we're going to do is to add a game folder. So I have a Switch Games folder here, which I'm going to double click on, and I'm going to press open. And this is my Switch Games folder. So I want to press save here. And now the games have been loaded up from that folder. So within your game folder, you can have various NSP or XCI files. What I recommend that you do is use a hacked switch in order to dump the games and then make a copy onto your Mac. It's also relatively simple to download these backups from the internet. Just do a search for the name of the game, switch, and then the file extension, XCI or NSP. And there are plenty of places to download them online. So while we're in this game library, what you can do is to control click on a game. And if you want to add updates or DLC, you can press manage title updates. And then we click the add button and what we're going to do is to add this particular No Man's Sky update and patch this from 1.0.0 to 4.0.4. So press save. And now that game is fully patched. 
And now that our Ryu Jing's game library is set up, it's time to do a little bit of performance testing. So the first game I'm going to be looking at is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now, if you've been reading online about the performance of this game on Switch, you'll know that it's pretty poor. However, through Ryu Jing's on the M1 Max chip, the game is given all the hardware it needs to brute force through all of the performance problems. So the game is capped at 30 FPS, and it wasn't any problem for my M1 Max chip to emulate this game, especially considering that we're running this at double the native resolution. I did try a method to unlock the FPS using a cheat and disabling VSync. However, this also made the game world run much faster too. However, it is possible to get over 60 FPS at 1x resolution. So next up is the game Super Mario Odyssey. Now this game runs fantastically on the Apple Silicon Mac, running fairly consistently at nearly 60 FPS the entire time at 1080p. The most significant blemish you're gonna notice is the fact that we have shader compilation stuttering. So the first time that you jump on a frog, for example, it's gonna stutter, but because that shader has now been cached, the next time that you do it, it won't cause that stutter again. So basically once you've run through the game and you've gone through all of the animations, then you shouldn't have as many stutters as you would at the beginning of the game. So next up is Metroid Dread. So I already covered this game in my last Switch emulation video, and it runs fantastically on the M1 Max chip. But this game also runs really well on the MacBook Air with the original M1 chip. Now this is really good news because emulation on Ryu Jinx is not just for the higher end MacBook Pros, but it also works great on the fanless, passively cooled original Apple Silicon Mac, which only has 8GB of RAM and 8 GPU cores. So next up is Persona 5 Royal. So earlier in the year, I did a video about PlayStation 3 emulation and we managed to get Persona 5 working on Apple Silicon Macs. However, this is the very first time that we managed to get the enhanced release of the game working on the Mac. And I'll definitely say that this performs much better than the RPCS3 version. Here I'm running the game at double the native resolution and we're also using the 60 FPS mod. There are some stutters, but it seems to be holding up at 60 FPS. So those are the success stories, but there are plenty of games which don't really render correctly. For example, here in Sonic Frontiers, the shadows are way too dark, and the game is quite stuttery despite the fact that we're capped at 30 FPS. No Man's Sky seems to work okay when you're flying around in space, but as soon as we get onto an actual planet, the graphical artifacts start appearing and then the frame rate tanks into the single digits. And disappointingly, some games just fail to load. For example, Doom Eternal will compile at shaders, it'll go through all of the splash screens, but then it will crash to desktop. And really, this is to be expected for the very first release of an emulator on a brand new platform. And really considering what the Ryu Jinx team have done, it is seriously impressive that Switch emulation is this mature on the Mac already. I highly recommend that you take a look at the Ryu Jinx blog post where they go into detail about overcoming some of the missing graphics API features, for example, geometry shaders. And I think that the techniques that they've used could potentially be translated into other areas of Mac gaming, for example, Windows games running through Crossover or through other emulators like Simu. So anyway, I can't wait to test out more Switch games running on the Mac. If you have any requests, then please leave a comment. Make sure to check out the Ryu Jinx Patreon page in order to support their project. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.